This gallery floor is called Bodies in Desire Beyond the Disciplinary Fold. Here we are creating a space for social imaginaries that are beyond the grip of surveillance, uh, military logic um, and incarceration. This is where we look at um, plural bodies and hybridity of pleasure and desire beyond the disciplinary logic that is imposed upon the mind-body relations. You will see quite a range of aesthetics uh, from resistance to U.S. imperial politics in the region, in Asia, but also in Latin America. Um, at the same time, you will be looking at um, punk aesthetics and queer culture across the spectrum as they um, resist um, the disciplinary formations in heteronormative and technocratic societies. In this corner of Gallery 3, we have the works of Cecilia Vicuña and Sangho Lee. Cecilia Vicuña is a Chilean artist and poet who many of you would know. It is a great honor for us to present three bodies of work by Cecilia Vicuña. These are paintings by her, which she made very early on when she was in London. She took exile after the dictatorship of Pinochet and in response, she began to paint. She began to paint about solidarity, about military repression, and the continued trauma for the Chilean people under years of dictatorship, under years of economic hardship. Many of these paintings were damaged, were lost. Cecilia refers to herself as an abandoned figure, and it was in poetry that she sought refuge. She sought companionship with artists, with allies across the world. And it is in recent years that a lot of her work has been coming back to life, that she has been revisiting and reinvigorating with young people from across the world. Young feminists and activists in Chile and beyond have been using her poetry and her performative ethics as part of their work. Sangho Lee is a Guangzhou-based artist and painter, very connected with the Minjung tradition, realist painting, through narrative style, evoking the aspects of militarism, looking at Buddhist iconography, but again, the way that it is entwined with violence in earthly life. You see the Bodhisattva, you see um, an armed militant, you see a mother and child, the familial bond, the militaristic bond, and the arms of the Bodhisattva inviting refuge, inviting protection. American imperialism, American intervention in Guangzhou during the uprising and later on, anti-nuclear efforts, um, efforts towards peace building as he was part of several protests. So many of these paintings are also used as activist posters. They've been used at protest sites. He in fact shared with us that for him, being in the Guangzhou Biennale for the very first time is something that is extremely special. He has so many allies in the city who have perhaps also been waiting equally for this moment, for him to be presented in this way with you know, none other than Cecilia Vicuña. So we have several other works of his in the background here. And we heard from the artist that he's very much now moving more and more towards Buddhist practice. In a sense, not retreating, but anticipating a new kind of representation. We are now with the work of Sian Deret, based in the Philippines. Sian's work very much thinks about questions of land rights, histories of genocide and of militarism, a genealogy of militarism really, looking at various sites in Asia, Korea, the Philippines, Duterte's regime today, the way that there has been militarization of the pandemic. He has been in conversation and working together with various minority groups, rural communities, peasant activists, agrarian struggles as part of his artistic practice, as part of an anti-cartographic logic that he workshops together with communities. He has been to Korea, to Guangzhou as part of the research visit really looking a lot also at the secret sites of US imperialism and militarism in Korea and also really echoing back to his own country. So you have here these sculptures, you have woodwork 
all collectively made with artisans in the Philippines, various found objects, quite uh, imbuing of a certain kind of horror, uh, bodily violence. So there's, there's a certain heaviness here, but at the same time, always with CN, humor and absurdity. What, what does it take to indoctrinate a body? What does it take to have a body succumb to the power of violence and military regimes? You also have here questions of democracy meeting with questions of immu impunity, benevolent assimilation. You have also here what it takes to recruit young people to join the army, very much connected also to what is happening in Korea. Further down, we have a, a quite a, a strange representation in folk art, really, as a Korean warrior taking on the spirit of Napoleon. So again, how historical representation travels between continents. And this is, again, one of the items really from the historical collection of the Gahue Minwa Museum that is a private apartment museum that we visited with artists. So artists were thinking very much together with, with these paintings as they were producing works for the Guangzhou Biennale. So it wasn't curators just handpicking them. It was a dialogue in a sense of really observing closely these paintings that are on view in the gallery, which includes to the left a knife goddess, a knife goddess who is wearing a military outfit, taking on a Japanese militant spirit, standing on knives together with gender fluid shaman helpers. You also have beyond that the work of Jacobi Satterwhite, a film called We Are In Hell When We Hurt Each Other. Jacobi's mother, Patricia Satterwhite, is a recurring protagonist in his work. She suffered from schizophrenia. She made sense of the world through drawing, through inventing apparatus, really thinking about a fantastical world for home shopping networks in a way to survive as a black woman from a lower class, struggling as blackness takes on a new kind of voyeurism, a new kind of avant-garde presence, centering once again Jacobi's body as a queer black body, dancing his way into a future where radical blackness takes over, where cyborg fembot bodies take over, take center stage, and are dancing in landscapes digitally simulated as well as natural. Patricia Satterwhite's voice is the voice in the, in the, in the video. He's worked with Nick Weiss. He's worked with um, various musicians, and so in a sense, including Solange, etc. So really, the, the soundtrack in uh, Jacobi's work is very much calling for us to, to take on those rhythms, uh, sonically to be attuned to him and his work. Also beyond here, we will walk towards the work of Candice Lynn. Candice Lynn has been working very closely with, with Daphne Ayas and Michelangelo Corsaro from our team. Really, um, without having come to Korea for the Biennale, developing a work that looks into the demilitarized zone as an accidental natural preserve. So you have this curtain very much operating as this this kind of engineered border that opens and closes, the curtain itself reflects the animals and plant life that are entwined, are hidden within this militarized, demilitarized zone in the Korean landscape. To the left, you have the work of Sahaj Rahal with Bashinda, a mythological character that he develops as a part of virtual world building spinning together the machine brain and militaristic logic, the way that Hindu mythology is used for fascist purposes and weaponization. You have in front of that the work of Imo de Maderos, the voodoo knots, really cosmonauts that are uh, covered with cowrie shells, determining also the question of cosmology, of black futurism, of militarism, and African economy and its exploitation. Behind as well, you have the work of Patricia Dominguez, which is a totem that we show. Her work continues to be shown also at the Yangne Mountain 
in the art polygon, but this weeping totem is reflecting on the way that militarism brings us towards ecological precarity and where indigenous futures are torn apart, yet the totem is also speaking back, speaking into a future, hopefully moving us forward, shuttling into a direction where sovereign worlds will manifest. We had invited about uh, 20 artists to join us to on-site visits, travel um, um, together and study together various aspects of uh, the Korean art scene, but also visual culture scene. So we've done visits to collections. We had discussions with shamans and scholars of um, Jeju massacre as well as the Guangzhou uprising. We've visited several civic initiatives, whether it's the May 18 archive or the Mother's House or various temples like Bakyansa Temple with our participant John Kwan. So luckily we were able to do these before the pandemic and one of the artists we've also engaged to work with us on site and to do a workshop was Anna Maria Milan who is uh, very much invested with her feminist uh, practice into virtual building, world building exercises. So she embraces um, live action role play um, as part of her art creation process. So the participatory collaborative aspects of what happens in these game, game character building exercises are actually mirroring also into her final artwork um, for that. Um, we had invited her to come and she collaborated with several uh, feminist uh, online gamers as well as um, framers, a well-known collective from Korea to develop this game. Um, and together they sat down and sketched for a week various scenarios and scripts and had role play opportunities and worked with various characters. So the, the game that you see actually as part of our um, a gallery three is um, that Min is now playing from Barnum is also a wonderful collaborator we've been engaged with for the last two years is a manifestation of that in front of the beautiful new window we also were able to open up in this building through grit and perseverance. <laughs> so here we are entering Vaginal Davis's installation. Um, she's a seminal figure of course when it comes to um, a discussion of punk aesthetics and refuge in um, chosen kin and radiant love. Um, here is her work that we were able to create actually in collaboration with a local bread, which I feel will be in many ways the heart of the exhibition with this incredible um, bread Madonna. And here you can actually see some of her paintings that she's um, She's done in reference to many ancestors in nail polish. Um, this is where you can see her entire um, um, engagement, especially in LA, where she grew up in the suburbs, especially how she's been shaped also by the Korean town aesthetics, um, which is very important to her. Um, and out of, um, out of this room, we're actually arriving now to um, Kang Sung Lee's incredible archive that he's initiated to capture and record also the histories of um, queer culture through magazine covers, through, through um, zines um, in, in Korea. He's based in LA, which connects also very nicely to Vaginal Davies. Um, and Kang Sung Lee actually combines also this um, archival initiative, which is still in its growth. It's, it's in its uh, uh, first years um, of beginning um, with some of his works as well in this section.